Pastor Dan, and we're doing Spotlight, and uh, talking about the Sabbath again, and uh, I, I'm not an expert on car mechanics for sure, but I've learned this, and I think you know it, is that everything depends on the maintenance in the car, and Laura Hilda's on me about it all the time. Don't forget, maintain the car, change the oil. You hear about these limousines that go, you know, 400, 500,000 miles because they are, they are maintained perfect. I have gone uh, on the dunes in Dubai, and these cars are stopping inches from other cars and doing really crazy things out on the dunes. And I said, how do you do this? We maintain these cars. My son wants to buy a truck, a big semi and evidently, you can buy them with 500,000 miles. That's like, okay, me, average, because they're maintained. They know they have to keep those trucks going to get their money out of it for a million miles. So you try to find them in that middle range. Maintenance, changing the oil, not letting pieces of metal be flowing around all the, all the gaps in your car. It's not going to work. you got to have lubrication maintenance. Someone wrote a paper for Harvard, and I have a copy of it, and they did the research and showed that people did better work if they had mandated time off, a Sabbath. And I think now we have rules. You have to have so long of a lunch. You have to have a coffee break. You have to have a coffee break. You have to have it recorded, check in and out, and you violate those things, you can get fined a lot of money. People have learned that people will perform better, be more creative, be healthier, sustain longer if they have maintenance, where they have some breaks in the life, chance to recover. All the athletes now have the word recover. It's right in their DNA. So they got to map out that those weeks at the Olympics. So to be sure that this race is this day, okay, you got to practice here, train here, recover here. Okay, then you ramp up, and then you're ready to go. Recovery is a huge part of the process. Maintenance, so that you don't get injured, so that you can do this game for a long time. Maintenance. We're crazy. We stay up late. Me too. I got two or three sermons I got to preach for a week. I said, boy, I'm not ready. I got to stay up late tonight just to be sure I can come up with an idea and get some stuff ready. And I stay up to midnight or 1 o'clock straining to get something done. And then the whole rest of the next day is wasted because I scratched out another hour late last night instead of sleeping. I should have done the one hour of sleeping and get 12 hours of rest and creative work back. Why do we do that? We cram for a final test. Then we're exhausted. And God knows what he's doing when he builds this into the system. Six days work. And one rest. Not because we're trying to satisfy the demands of a control freak God. That's not who he is. That's what Satan wants to say, tell us about him. He wants us to live at our very best. There's a guy with a very long name has written a book called Flow. It's a video. It's really interesting. There are certain moments when you just have it going. You are, you are feeling good. And you know you got it, and you are right on sync, and you are on top of your game, and you are balanced, and you are energetic. If you're an actor, you're ready to do the scene. If you're a preacher, you're ready to preach. You know you're in tune with God, and he is speaking through you. If you're an athlete, they call it being in the zone. The golf cup looks huge. The, basket, the basketball hoop looks big. You can see the spin of the pitch coming from the pitcher. You're in the zone. You can't miss. It doesn't last very long. You're in the flow. And the whole process is to learn how to have more, more moments of flow where you're the best you can be. You watch a football game, and it can be kind of drudgery, and you're just kind of not making much progress. And then all of a sudden, they get to the two-minute warning, and there's stuff going on. The other day, they had 25 points in the last two minutes between the two teams. Unbelievable. They had flow. And the quarterback made every pass, and he knew where to throw it, and the wide receivers knew, and they had flow. 
I've had moments, not many, of sports like that. I've had them preaching for sure when you just know you're in sync with God. And what God wants to do with a Sabbath is to give us more moments of flow where we are resting and we are creative and we are efficient and we are getting the most out of life and we get to be the best version of ourselves because we're doing it God's way. He is not trying to be difficult. He's not trying to control, not trying to test us. He just said, I'm God. I know I made you. I know how it's best. And he wants you to keep you a Sabbath for that. So I just want to do it. Magic Johnson calls it winning time, those last two minutes. We don't want to just have those last two minutes and live winning time. We want to win all the time, 24 hours a day. We want to be on top of our game. You walk into a room and you know you got it because we're doing it God's way. Enjoy a Sabbath and get into the flow. See you next week. Thank you for watching Spotlight. We're so excited about this. We hope that you'll subscribe and so you'll get all of them. And please just forward it on to others and tell other people about it. And let's just see what kind of an audience we can get for these messages of Spotlight. God bless you.